In this video, we'll be flipping through each page in the homeschool lesson planning notebook. I'll be sharing this planner's pros and cons and ways that you can use this in your homeschool. Let's get started. If you're new here, welcome. At the Homeschool Newbie, we help homeschooling parents go from confusion to confidence in their homeschooling journey. Hello, this is the Homeschool Newbie, and I'm here to show you this fun planner called Homeschool Lesson Planning Notebook. This is an undated 12 month uh, planner, which is really awesome for homeschoolers who start at different times of the year or take breaks and need to take advantage of the writing space, don't want to um, waste any pages. So the cover, let's start with this. Very cute design, um, soft cover and flexible. Um, I, the binding um, is a little tough to kind of, as you can see, it kind of, I'm fighting it as I'm opening it. But what a lot of people do with this kind of binding is take it to their, uh, to a store to have it spiral bound. So they cut this and then spiral bound it themselves. And for a big beefy book like this one, um, it might be worth it. Okay, so we come to the intro page. And because this is so big, I assume they added this fun index here so you can keep track of where you have written important things for your homeschool. Um, we have the their own index here, and then you have yours here and on the back. And then we come to a year overview, which is really nice. Um, there is a little bit of a see-through to the back of this page. I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up, um, but yeah, it's a little bit distracting, but it does have grid lines here to help you write straight and take advantage of this small space so you can write more. Um, this year overview is probably meant to write any important dates or plans that you have that you can just view at a glance. So we have the attendance, um, we have the months of the year, and then the days of the month over here. And there's two copies of this. Uh, a lot of families just color in one day for their whole family. So I'm not exactly sure why they included two, maybe for two years, but it says it's a 12 month calendar. I'm not sure, maybe two students. Um, yeah, so, so there's that, just in case, I guess you get an extra one. Um, we have curriculum overview where you can write in the curriculum and any notes you have or the subject and curriculum ideas that you have for that subject or student. Um, however you want to organize it, you have a space for your curriculum here and actually a very generous amount of space for it. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five pages dedicated to curriculum, which is awesome. If you have a lot of students, you're going to need a lot of places to organize this. Classes, um, compared to the curriculum page, the classes is pretty small. Um, I'm sure you can kind of borrow some of these pages if you need to for classes. And maybe this is just online classes your kids are doing. Um, and then we have field trips. So you can view your field trips uh, for the whole year. Just jot them down here. There's not a lot of room to plan out the whole field trip here, but um, definitely a good calendar view so you can see what's coming up. We have book list and this is four pages, which is awesome. You can use this as a wish list, a read aloud or a log for your students. And this design's cute too. It's kind of trending right now where you write in the title of the book and when they finish, they can color in the book right here. And that's on all four of these pages. So we have curriculum prog progress. So as your students complete the days, to their uh, curriculum, you could kind of track where they are in that. So a space to write, maybe what the curriculum is up here, and then track that down here. We have quite a bit of space for that, probably corresponding to the other curriculum lists over here in the beginning. Wow, lots. So I think there's about 12 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we have a note page and then a month overview page, and it's undated, so you can fill in the dates here. Um, I personally would have preferred two full pages for this because this amount of space per day seems a bit small to me. But they did add these, I don't know if you can see this, but they did add these little dot grids to help you take advantage of that small space so you can write in those lines. Um, and this is cool too, it's not lined, it's dotted. So you, maybe if you are more of a mind map or a brainstormer, you can kind of 
have your notes spread out instead of um, restricted to just the line list format. And same thing with here, we go into the weeks. You have the dotted uh, month notes, and then we have the week goals and notes here. So you can have notes here and goals here with a checkbox for each goal that you might, might wanna write. And, and then you can have a spot for reflection. So a lot of spot, spaces to write throughout your months and your weeks. And then you can talk about your schedule. It looks like we have the uh, times of the day. So 6 a.m. all the way to 9 p.m. If you wanna talk about or write in your schedule for that week. And it looks like it repeats this schedule too. So if you have slightly different schedule, um, you can adjust that each week. Okay, and we go to the weekly plan, which is awesome. I love that they took advantage of both uh, pages on this and they left these blank, the subjects. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you homeschool seven days a week, you could write in the days here. If you homeschool six days a week or less, you can write down up here. Um, so if you take it, if you want to plan in your weekends as well, um, you can have the space to do that. You just need to write, like write it horizontally, which is really fun. I love how adaptable this planner is. So we go to the daily details. So each day you is, or sorry, each page is sectioned into two days. So you have a notes for each day of the week that you might be homeschooling. And there's two, four, six days that you can plan. And then we have a, re a repeat. So this is now week two, which is what we've seen before. And then it goes all the way to week four. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, week four. And then, and then it starts over with the month. So we have end of month reflections page, and then we start over with another month. And this pattern, the month, and then four weeks is repeated until we get to the back of the book which is, let me show you, I can find it, okay. So we have end of month reflections. Okay, here we go. The end of year wrap up, and there is one, two pages for this, yes. And this says what went well and focus for next year. So you have two pages to write everything you need to reflect on the year, which is really cool. Um, so now let's go over a few pros and cons to this planner. So definitely a pro to this is there's it's big enough and beefy enough to write pretty much anything you want in here so that you can write during the week and even the day. So like I said, it's organized into months, weeks, and days. And the days part is not very common with a lot of planners because people don't dedicate as much space to that. And this planner does. So if you are a detailed planner, this one is for you. You will love all of the space. There's a lot of extra spaces to write notes. So there's a lot of reflection pages um, each month and each week, and a lot of notes throughout. Um, not a lot at the back, which I think is fine because of all of the notes on the in, inside. But if that bothers you, um, you know, I guess there's a little blank space here, but not a lot of notes in the back, but a lot of notes throughout the whole planner. Um, so we have, and then the format, is very clean and it's very inviting for flexibility, um, mind mapping even, which is kind of unique to this planner. And the design is very cute. I feel like the fonts are generally pretty um, clean. This one's a little bit harder to read, but not unreadable. Um, and the design is very nice. It's like a lot of lines and grids and blank spaces to make this planner your own. Okay, a couple of cons, there's not a lot, um, but. One obvious one is the sheer size of this. Um, so if you want to travel with this book, it's going to be heavy. Um, and it's uh, another thing that I noticed is there's a lot in this book, right? And, and But there's no tabs to help you navigate through each month. You kind of have to, like I was kind of showing you earlier, you have to kind of flip through to find the week. Okay, I'm on this week kind of thing. Um, a lot of people put um, paper clips in to paper clip different sections, so that might help, but the way it comes, it doesn't come with any dividers, and that might um, slow you down with navigation. Um, another thing I did mention is the binding. Um, even though there's a lot of space to write, it's kind of, um, especially at the beginning of the book, it kind of fights you to stay open, 
because you'd have to crease it really hard for you to kind of um, keep that page from interfering with your writing. Uh, but other than that, this is a very good planner for those detailed planners. Um, the ones that just maybe even come up with their own homeschool curriculum, there's space in here for you to plan that. Um, so a lot of reflection pages, if you're a goal setter, a lot of space for that. So thank you for going over this with me and I hope you have a great day. If you're feeling excited about getting organized this school year, grab my homeschooling starter kit. Also, don't miss the other homeschooling, homeschooling planners planner that I'll be reviewing in this series if you're new here, in our YouTube channel. At the and newbie, read the full blog post on homeschoolnewbie.com. You can find all of these resources journey. in the description below. Thanks for watching.